Hey there, it's Laszlo Marcel and welcome to my smart home slash home networking reality channel. In today's video, we will take a look inside this box that I got from a company called Local Bytes. What's inside the box, you might ask? Well, it's obviously smart home related stuff, but stuff you should also totally buy, especially if you are new to the DIY smart home scene. Interested? Keep on watching the video after the intro. First of all, let me emphasize that this is not a sponsored video in any way. This is more like a tribute to a small one-man company that does what actually most or all of the smart home related companies should do. Local Bytes emphasizes open source firmware and local control. This is something I really like about DIY home automation and smart homes. Anyway, after this forward, finally, let us open this box, right? Okay, so what are these? These are power monitoring and uh, smart plugs, which the Tosmota firmware. So out of the box, this should work with Home Assistant via MQTT. This is a third one, and this one is an RGB light bulb that is also pre-configured and pre fetched with Tasmota. If you take a look at this one, you, look, you can see that this looks like your ordinary LED light bulb. However, this has Wi-Fi and this has uh, Tasmota pre fetched Now, as you can see, normally the, for an average user, uh, for someone who is not uh, proficient with electronics and stuff like that, there's no way to flash the firmware here. I mean, where can you open it? Where can you connect stuff to it? And this is the strength of uh, this whole idea that uh, is presented by Local Bytes. That you can have a Tasmuta uh, flashed uh, smart light bulb out of the box without the hassle of uh, compiling, downloading, flashing, whatever. Okay, let's try this out. Also, let's take a look here at the smart plug. I expect nothing fancy, to be honest. But in general, the whole thing suggests good quality. I mean, nice branded boxes. I can hardly believe that this is done by a one-man company. And here we go. Nicely branded, ready to use. And of course, because I'm in Hungary, this comes with the EU plug. But uh, as far as I remember, uh, they have this for UK and US plug as well. Okay, let me get uh, some power for these and let's uh, pair them up with Home Assistant. First, let's start with the light bulb because I'm really interested in its quality. So this is a Xiaomi smart light I've been using for a while. And uh, while I like these in general, I don't like the idea that uh, in case of disconnections, there are problems reconnecting them to Home Assistant. I mean, one of them is notorious about just uh, staying off and I literally have to cut power from it and then turn it on forcefully. So, okay, let's... Uh, Replace this with the local bytes light bulb. Okay. One thing to note is that uh, when this thing says white, it's actually white and not uh, some thing that is close to white and it is much brighter. So that is a good point already. By the way, if you are about to freak out due to this flickering you see on the screen, don't worry. We will solve that by configuring the Tasmota firmware right after we have connected it to our Wi-Fi. If you haven't configured the Tasmota based uh, device before, I have good news for you. So just like with commercial devices, 
you can use your smartphone and um, you will use the device as a hotspot so you connect to it via wi-fi then uh, when it asks it will uh, well open up this screen for you where you can connect it to your actual wi-fi so you select one of your access points enter the password then tasmota will do its magic it will take a couple of seconds or even a minute or two depending on your wi-fi and, and coverage and whatnot but ultimately it will just um, forward you to uh, another screen if the screen doesn't appear you can type in the ip address of the device into a browser or even on another device you like on your pc and uh, that is where uh, you will be able to configure the changes to the firmware so regarding the flickering as i mentioned before i solved it via configuring the tasmota firmware so you just open this control page where you can change settings and go to console here you have to use a command the command is pwm frequency and if you type it without any parameters and hit enter it will show you the current setting so for me this is 100 this number is basically the double of the means frequency where you live so for example in the united states this should be 120 because they have um, 60 hertz means there in hungary where i live this is 100 because we have 50 hertz so as soon as i type the command pwm frequ frequency white space 100 press enter the flickering problem went away just take a quick look so this is how it looks like now also this uh, whole pwm frequency is quite an interesting thing and uh, it's quite complicated to cover in this video so I'm, instead i will just uh, leave a link in the description for a nice write-up if you're interested in the topic now let's configure this thing to be usable with home assistant Given this is a Tasmata based device, the easiest way to set it up is to have MQTT enabled on the device and have the Tasmata integration ready and uh, set up in Home Assistant. So first of all, you just open this page once again, go to configuration, configure MQTT, set up your MQTT host here, option you can change the username and the password. Click save, wait for the device to reboot. Then we are pretty much done here. So you just go to Home Assistant, then select the Tasmata integration. If you don't have the Tasmata integration, don't worry. You can just uh, add here by clicking Add Integration, then searching for Tasmata. Okay, now I click Devices here, and I can see that the light already has been discovered and added. Obviously, I'm not really satisfied with this name. This is too generic. So to change it, I go back to the device configuration once again. So configuration, this time I click configure other, then I can change the name here. So let's say local bytes RGB one. Once again, I click save, wait a few seconds, go back here. After some time, it will refresh automatically, but uh, if I'm impatient, I can just keep clicking refresh. And after a few seconds, magic will happen. And now, as you can see, it's named as local bytes RGB1. So if I click it, I can see that uh, it is a normal RGB light. I can control it here or better, I can add it to a dashboard so i have a dashboard set up just for demonstrating stuff let's add it to there add to dashboard great now if i go to the dashboard i have the light set up here i can change the user settings color temperature brightness whatnot and obviously now it is ready for use within automations and stuff as you can see here, I already have this power monitor added, which is uh, the other device, the other kind of device I ordered from Localbytes. 
So let's uh, let me demonstrate this one quickly as well, uh, with skipping the obvious parts, because for example, uh, connecting to this is also to a smooth base and connecting it to Wi-Fi is exactly the same process like it was with the RGB light. So after connecting your power monitor or smart switch, depending the way you look at it, uh, to your Wi-Fi, this is the screen you will be greeted with. So it uh, shows you a lot of statistics like uh, power draw and whatnot, depending on obviously what you have connected to it. For now, for in my case, this is uh, connected to uh, mains directly and uh, through it I have connected my uh, home lab server or one of my servers. So it shows uh, the power draw and whatnot. Obviously configuration is the same, so you configure MQTT, configure other, and just uh, like I showed a minute ago, it will show up in Home Assistant and you can add it to a dashboard. If you go to Home Assistant, Devices, Services, Task Motor, and check out the Power Monitor device itself, you can see it has a lot of sensors, which is great. And um, obviously, uh, you can uh, turn it on and off. Now, in my case, since it powers a server, this is quite dangerous. So I looked at a way, or looked for a way, to disable this. And uh, although um, uh, it is uh, still visible as a toggle in Home Assistant, in reality, I cannot really toggle this. It will remain on. So how did I do this? How did I turn this smart switch into uh, a power monitor, a smart power monitor, which I cannot accidentally toggle and uh, turn off the device with it? I mean the server that is connected to it. So it turns out that, as usual, Tasmus is an awesome firmware and it has a command called power and state where you can specify how the device should act. Uh, this is basically a setting for um, starting up the device, the smart plug. And if you specify power and state, then four in the console, then after restarting the device, and that means the hard restart, like disconnecting it from mains uh, and then reconnecting it, the device will turn on and it will disable further relay control. And by relay control, it means that you cannot turn it off. So that is actually great. I cannot accidentally uh, cut power from the server with this device. Because, well, <laughs> that's not how you shut down servers, right? Okay, so as I mentioned before, now once again, we have a device that is fully cloud independent, locally controlled runs on open source firmware and you can add it to your dashboard not just like this but for example you can do nice graphs so I just add this one select power monitor done here we go I select power for example set it to 72 hours click save and now I can see how uh, my energy uh, consumption for this server went. So how did you like this video and how did you like the idea that uh, local bytes promotes? Personally, as I mentioned before, I really like this. I mean, in 2022, smart homes should be affordable, should be widely available, should be open source and should be trustworthy enough for anyone to try. And DIY automation, home automation, DIY smart homes should be no exception. So I happily support any company that uh, goes in this direction. Anyway, I think this is all I wanted to tell you about this package, about these products and about uh, local bytes in general. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section of the video. And obviously, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and like the video, please consider subscribing, that helps me a lot. And yeah, you will be notified when I upload a new video.
anyway once again thanks for watching this and hope to see you next week next time with a new video bye